people's lives. I believe that what we have to share tonight is really going to uh, impact people's living, their relationships, their um, just their whole well overall wet well being. And I'm excited um, about what God has for us tonight. Uh, we're dealing with the topic of of anxiety uh, in this season. We're going to talk about anxiety. Um, so, hey, Aunt Teresa. Uh, so I really want us. I want you to share it. I want you to like it. Um, if you want to start your own watch parties, that that's great as well. Um, because I really want to try to reach as many people with this topic. Uh, I've been been prayerful about what we discuss in Bible study live. And on this format and this platform that God has given us, and I want us to be able to to do something that impacts people's lives, that reach people, that um, really gives people an opportunity to discuss from a biblical standpoint and just a real standpoint about what what God has to say about the real matters that we deal with in life. Hey, Sister Ramona, God evening to you too. Uh, like I said, we're going to give folks just a few minutes to get in. So like, um, click, share. If you're with us via YouTube, go ahead and uh, join us that way. Uh, we hope that um, we don't have any disconnect issues like we did on Sunday morning. Good, good evening, Sister Rita. Good evening to you. Uh, so I pray, I pray that this week so far has been a peaceful week for everybody that... Uh, You've had the opportunity to really relax and find some rest and some and some solitude and reflect on what resurrection morning and what the resurrection of Jesus means to you. But tonight we're dealing with this topic of of anxiety. Hey, Terry, how are you doing? Uh, because I feel like there's so many topics that we don't address in church that they're Hey, sister Kim. How are you doing? I hope my guys are doing well. Um Charmaine, hey, it's been a long time. How are you? Um, but I really feel like with this platform that God has given us, that it's an opportunity for us to have some real and relevant conversations about some stuff that we normally don't talk about or, or we don't talk about publicly as believers. I think sometimes we have these conversations in the sanctuary or in the church building, but these conversations about the realness of life need to happen outside of those four walls. And I'm Glad that God has given us these uh, platforms to share. So our text tonight, we're coming from two different scriptures. Um, we're coming from we're coming from the book of Psalm, um, Psalm fifty five and twenty two, and we're talking about anxiety. So Psalm fifty five and twenty two, uh, I'm reading from the King James version, and it says, "Cast your cares on the Lord." And he will sustain you. He will never let the righteous be forsaken. That's a powerful text right there in Psalms 55 and 22. Um, because often with anxiety. Now, let me let, let me just go ahead and start off by saying this first. There are some clinical and medical things that happen in us that God has equipped professionals, medical professionals to be able to address. So I'm not one of those preachers that's going to tell you, you can just pray everything away. Sometimes the answer to your prayers is to use, is to go to who God has equipped with knowledge, wisdom, and understanding to help us with some of the things that we deal with. So please don't think that this Bible study is going to be about just simply praying everything away. I am a witness that prayer works. I'm a witness that uh, that God answers prayers. I believe in the power of prayer. I know it for myself, but I also know through life experience that God equips people, that God provides people uh, with, a, with a certain set of skills, with a certain set of information and training to help his children through these um, issues we call life, all right? So anxiety in Psalm 55 and 22, it says, cast your cares on the Lord for he will sustain you. He will never let the righteous be forsaken. He'll never let the righteous be shaken. Um, that, that's an important text because whether it's a financial difficulty or a strained relationship or an overwhelming workload or family problems or health issues and anxiety um, can really creep its way into our lives in so many different forms. 
Um, and it could just be a general feeling of being uneasy throughout your day. It can be restless um, or, or sleepless nights. It, or it can be a full-fledged anxiety attack because those are real. Um, but oftentimes, because of some poor theology and some poor um, pastoral care, if I can be uh, honest about that, as Christians, when we deal with anxiety, one of the first things that we sometimes feel is guilt. Um, like, why sh should I be feeling this way if I'm a Christian, right? Um, so many times we as Christians feel like we're made to believe that we're immune from life's issues or that we are um, immune from having to uh, deal with, with, with the rough realities of life, this sickness and pain and torment and distress and anxiety and worry aren't in our cards. They are. Um, that's why the Bible says be anxious for nothing, right? Um, because God knows we will deal with anxiety. So the first thing we have to talk about with anxiety is remove the stigma from being from dealing with anxiety. Um, so as Christians, yes, we're going to be anxious at times. As Christians, we are going to deal with um, anxiety issues. It can be it's it's really a spectrum. It can be from one end of just being uneasy in your spirit about things to being concerned about some other things to being, like I said earlier, a full fledged panic attack um, where you feel like your chest is going to cave in. You, you can't seem to catch your breath. You become dizzy. Um, that's real, y'all. And uh, and so what the first thing we have to do, like I said, is get rid of the stigma. Christians are going to experience anxiousness. Christians are going to have moments of despair. Christians are going to go through these things. So do not allow the anxiousness that our society brings. If you really boil down our culture, our culture breeds anxiety um, from our children. Kids are dealing with anxiety. Um, from young ages, because there's so much pressure placed on people. Um, I picked the picture. If you if you saw it on, on Facebook, you've seen the, the image. And if you're watching us via YouTube live, I picked this image of a black man dealing with anxiety because as black men, we often feel this pressure. We, we feel this overwhelming sense of I have to fix everything. I have to manage everything. I can't show weakness um, with all of that happening. We oftentimes internalize that. And then when we don't deal with these issues, they manifest in ways in unhealthy ways that hurt our families, that hurt us, that hurt those around us, that hurt our communities. And so the first thing is get rid of that stigma. If we learn to have talks about these things, um, if we learn to address these issues, then we're better off as a people because then we can allow God to deal with them through the various means God has prescribed for dealing with anxiety. Um, at some point, I want to deal with depression because it's a separate issue um, and some other things. So since we're being real and relevant, um, first off, Christians are going to experience, but Psalms 55 and 22 tells us, give our burdens to the Lord and he will take care of us. And so the first thing we have to do is really develop a relationship with God that is past that, that, that surpasses the superficial and really spend time with God and meditate with God. I don't know where we got this notion like we can't be honest with God. I don't know where this poor theology came from that we can't be transparent with God. Um, because out of one side of our mouth, we say he's omnipotent and he's omnipresent and God knows everything. He's Alpha and Omega. And then the other out the other side of our mouth, we don't deal with the real issues that we're facing and uh, and that causes us to really try to hide things from a God that nothing can be hidden from. So he says to cast our cares, to give our burdens to God. And so that starts from the very beginning. That's the seed. When we don't daily spend time with God and give those issues over to God, anxiety can sometimes take root. And I'm not talking about clinical anxiety at this point, but anxiety can really take, take root in us. And it may not seem like a big deal, but it's a lot going on under the surface than what we can see. And so a lot of time we think we're fine. We tell everybody we're fine. Hey, to everybody on YouTube Live, how are y'all doing? Um, we tell everybody that we're doing okay. But under the surface, anxiety, it has the seed of it's already planted. And now the roots are spreading around under the surface of our life. And we don't realize something's wrong until something breaks ground, right? 
right? And so um, that's something we have to be careful of. So if we are Christians, yes, we're going to deal with this, but God tells us to cast our cares on him. And notice the verse doesn't tell us in the Psalm 55 and 22, it never tells us that we should have life figured out. God never expected us to figure this thing we call life out. Life is really a series of questions and exploration that God walks along with us through. And so we shouldn't feel bad because we don't know how to handle everything that's thrown on our plates because life throws a lot at us if we can be real honest about it. Um, and so it doesn't and it doesn't say that we'll never experience anxiety. Right. Um, so God obviously knows we're going to go through these things. But rather, it says when we do have burdens, when we do have cares and issues and troubles that we are to give them to God, that we're to lay it at his feet. Right. But that requires us to have the kind of relationship with God where we can be transparent with God and stop trying to hide things from a God that nothing can be hidden from. So the only way we can really start casting those cares is really start having honest conversations with God. Your prayer life should be the most transparent part of your life. You should be more transparent in your prayers than you are with your spouse, with your friends, with your counselor. Like that's where it starts. Transparency starts with God because he knows you, he created you, and he loves you so much that he would sacrifice for you. So why not be real and be honest with God about what you're dealing with, right? It doesn't make you weak. It doesn't make you a non-believer, right? We got to stop this stuff of, of punishing people and making people feel like when they have doubts, fears, and questions that they're less of a Christian. None of that makes you less of a Christian, what it means is that you're human and God has already created a plan for you when he said, cast your cares on me. All right. So that's so so understand that's the that's that's the foundational piece of this is that we got to have the kind of relationship where we can cast our cares to God. But the good, good news is, is that um, God's created a prescription for us and he's created methods for us to deal health in a healthy sense with anxiety. Uh, so many people deal with it and, and when we mask it and I'm going to be fully transparent right here, I've dealt with anxiety. I've dealt with depression. I've dealt with those things. Um, and I say dealt with because I had to, I had to come to a place where I had to deal with it because it was really starting to deal with me. And that's something you have to understand about life. Whatever you don't deal with, it will eventually deal with you. Um, in all kinds of ways that hurt the ones you love, that affects your health, right? A lot of a lot of our health issues come from carrying anxiety in us and trying to bottle this up and trying to look good for everybody else. Um, it's okay not to be okay. And I think that's something we overlook on social media um, is that we, we often post that, but do we really mean it? Um, and so that's something we need to really start working on is having those honest conversations with God and also being honest with ourselves about what we're dealing with. Uh, because some days you just don't feel like it. Um, and, our, and our culture breeds anxiety. Um, we were taught to compete constantly. We're taught that we got to have more of this and more of that and more of this and more of that. And when we don't have it, we don't feel like we measure up when we feel anxious or when we do get it, then the anxiety becomes, how do I maintain everything that now I've worked so hard to get? Um, or, or am I going to disappoint people because this part of my life isn't lining up with what people expect of me? Um, so these are all real things that, that, that we deal with. And I think that God really wants us to, to give that to him. So I want to move our, our scriptural text over to Romans. Um, I want us to go to Romans. Uh, I want us to go to Romans chapter 15. In verse 13, because um, I believe that, that this text, we often overlook it in the Bible. There's some there's some meat in, in the Bible that we often overlook because we're so used to bouncing from the same things. Um, but those of y'all who, who are with us, uh, if you've ever had to deal with anxiousness, I think you I think y'all get it right. Um, I'm not I'm kind of feel like I'm preaching to, to the choir, uh, but I believe that God wants us to deal with our issues so that we can then deal, we can then be there and be supportive of other people and their issues. Notice I said be supportive, not take on other people's issues. 
also part of anxiety and dealing with anxiety is because we're trying to fix things that was never meant for us to fix. We're, we're, we're trying to patch this and mend this and put this together and take this apart and scaffold this when these were things God never designed for us to do in the first place. Uh, and so I think that's part of dealing with anxiety is also dealing with the fact that you're not supposed to fix everything. You cannot fix everybody in your life. There are some people in your life, some people that are really close to you that you love and you can't fix them. And I think that's the honest thing you need to have. That's an honest piece of conversation that you got to have with God. You got to turn some folk over to God real quick, fast, in a hurry, because what it's doing it is it's killing you trying to fix their issues, trying to mend their broken hearts, trying to cover up their wounds and their scars and trying to medicate them uh, to help them get through to the point where you're not really taking care of yourself the way that you should. You're not really dealing with the things that you need to be dealing with. I believe God calls us to be supportive and to hold people accountable through love, but he never told us to pick up that, that burden and carry it for somebody else to the point where, where we're not trusting in God to help those people. And sometimes we can become the biggest obstacle to some people getting their breakthrough because we're so busy trying to carry everything. They have no, they have no motivation to give it to God because we carry it for them. So in essence, we become somebody else's God with a little G. Um, trying to trying to micromanage and trying to macromanage other people's lives. But anyway, Romans chapter 15 and verse 13 um, is a prayer. And it says, may the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace as you trust in, in him so that you may overflow with hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. There's some words in there that I really, really uh, want to deal with in this text. So like sometimes things happen in life and we can't control that, right? Layoffs happen. Um, the only thing we can do about that is try to have an emergency fund. But think about it. People tell us to have, a, have, to have an emergency fund, have money put in the bank and all of this stuff. But it's hard to even get there based off of the, the culture that we live in. It's hard to even get that. So things happen in life. Anxiety will happen. Um, and when you spend time stressing out over things you can't control, you are pouring miracle grow over those seeds of anxiety in your spirit. And they are just flourishing under the surface. And then they start sprouting out above the surface. And so understand, uh, understand this, whether you are anxious about a deadline or, or you're chronically um, plagued by... Uh, by exaggerated worry or by real issues, you're not alone. Even if you can't imagine it, God has an overflow of hope that is stored up for his children. So even in the midst of chaos, in the midst of crises, in the midst, in the midst of anxiety, you need to stop long enough to hear God's voice. And that's something I'm going to challenge you to do. Stop long enough to hear God's voice. I want to challenge you to spend five minutes a day in prayer and tell God what you're anxious about. I want you to spend that time in prayer and really tell God what has you concerned, right? But not only that, I also want to challenge you to get a notepad, to get um, a journal book, they're real cheap, get a whatever, um, you can do it in your phone, journal about how whatever you're anxious about, what is making you, what is, what is it making you feel, right? Like, how are you feeling carrying that, that anxiety? But I also want you to also put down in your journal, how is that affecting you, right? How is it affecting your relationships? How is it affecting your health? How is it affecting your, your appetite? How is it affecting um, your job, right? Uh, so yes, be careful for nothing, prayer and supplication. We have to take it to God in prayer. So I do want to challenge you outside of your normal prayer routine, or even if you don't have a prayer routine, spend five minutes a day in prayer, simply telling God what you're anxious about. Tell God the things that have you stressed out, concerned, the, the stuff that's, that's really causing you to, uh, to spend times awake at night, not really sleeping, you're getting sleep, but you're not really getting rest. I want you to spend time giving that stuff 
over to God and that will free you. And if you are doing doing that, I want to continue to, to do that. But then I also want you to take it a step further. Share that with somebody else. Help somebody else to do that. Even if you need to be somebody's prayer, prayer partner just to get them started, just to give them a boost in it, um, do that, right? And but if you're dealing with anxiety at when it's at the crippling level, um, if you feel it getting to that where you're having panic attacks and anxiety attacks, go see a professional. There is no harm in seeing somebody that God has equipped to deal with these things in life. There's no shame in it. But I want us to go back to Romans 15 and 13. This is a prayer from the Apostle Paul to, to the Christians in Rome. So if you listen to, to, this, to this text, if you read it aloud to yourself, I think you can hear God's voice speaking to you. That when I read the, this text in, in, in preparation, I, I felt like that was God speaking to me. And, and Paul carefully chooses his words as, as he mentions the God of hope. And I hope you all caught that when you were reading the text. Um, did, did you all catch that when he said the God of hope, right? He didn't say, I hope you get this, right? He said, may the God of hope. See, that's important because hope is part of God's nature. It's part of God's character. And so when you have an intimate relationship with God, then you can then begin to, to grow that relationship, to know him in God's multifaceted ways. God is really like a uh, Rubik's cube, right? There's so many different um, functions and, and, and combinations to God. Not that you're trying to figure God out, but you just learn with every twist of life, you learn and see a new combination of God. And when you see that Paul writes in Romans 15 and 13, starts off, made the God of hope. Because hope is God's nature. But understand this. In this text, Paul doesn't ask God to simply take away their anxiety. Right? Um, because we know God can. God can take it away. God can lift it up off of you. And there is uh, nothing wrong. And I mean, that that is great. But that's not often what God does. So, of course, Paul knew that the Romans would, would be back in the same boat if God has simply lifted it, right? Think about this. How many times has God had to rescue us from situations, right? Um, I consider it almost like parenting. When you are trying to parent your, your child, if you keep keeping them from experiencing some, some consequences or having to work some things out for themselves, you end up raising crippled adults. Um, people who haven't fully matured into being adults because you've You've always bailed them out. You've always done this. And I'm not saying that parents who do that are terrible. We love our kids. But it's sometimes our kids have to bump their heads. Sometimes when learning to ride the bicycle, you got to let the bike fall sometimes, right? Um, because, because those bumps and those bruises do mature us and grow us to some degree. Um, but I'm, what, I, what I'm saying is this. When we talk about Paul's prayer that made the God of hope, God could have taken the hope away but if we don't change our thinking about the lives that we are living, we will wind up in the same rut over and over again. We're simply on a merry-go-round and not moving forward. We're on like a roller coaster, simply going. You're really not going anywhere. You're following the same loop of tracks each time. And so there has to be a changing in our thinking if we really want to deal with anxiety. We gotta, we gotta change how we think about the way we live. And are we really focusing on the most important things in life? So instead of just asking God to, to, take the, to take it away, instead, Paul asked God to fill them with all the joy and peace. Because if God takes something away and simply leaves a space there, we will fill it with more junk, right? Uh and we got to be careful of that. So anytime God is removing something from us, we have to fill it with something that's needed. And I, and I really want us to really start thinking about that. You never really get rid of a habit. You replace it with something else. Um, you see that for those of you who have tried to quit smoking or have quit smoking. Um, once you stop smoking, you tend, some people chew on pens, some people chew on pencils, um, some people eat a lot, right? Because they're trying to feel with that, with that one habit removed from that void that it left. And so we got to be really careful 
about that because then we'll move from being anxious about things to then trying to cope with the anxiousness by filling ourselves with something else, right? So we'll turn to alcohol, but understand this alcohol is a depressant, right? Um, when people say they, they, that's why when some people get, get a little lit, they get a little tipsy, they, that they become crying, they become emotional because it's a depressant, right? Alcohol does not take you up. It brings you down. And, and if you're dealing with anxiety and then you mix alcohol with that, you are pushing yourself into a cliff of depression, right? Um, and so that's why we can't just fill our lives with any old thing. That's why people who go from relationship to relationship to relationship um, aren't really going forward in those relationships. They're just bouncing through partners because they're trying to fill a God-sized space. So instead of just saying, God, take their anxiety away, take their cares away, instead, God, fill them. But the good thing about filling is this. Um, if you've ever filled a cup, right, it, it will move things out of it, right? Um, if you've ever filled a fish tank, or if you've ever filled any, any any vessel that has something in it, if you keep filling it with, with water or whatever you're filling it with, some of those other things will eventually rise to the top and come out. And so the more we fill our lives with all of God's joy and God's peace and God's spirit, then some of that stuff lifts up out of us. It's basically flushing the things out of us that aren't like God. And so that was Paul's prayer. So as we deal with anxiety and its crippling effects that sometimes it can have on us is that we have to start filling ourselves and we got to start this process sooner than later, right? It's really hard to fill yourself when you've uh, forced so much other stuff inside of yourself, right? Unhealthy things. And then you try to fill it with God's spirit where there ain't that much room for it. Okay. And, and so that's why that was Paul's prayer for, for the church in Rome was that they, that the God of hope would fill them with all of the joy and peace. Joy is, the, the joy of the Lord is our strength, right? And God can give us peace that surpasses all understanding. That's why some folk can look at you when the world's on flames behind you and, and you chill because you know he's got it because he's giving you some peace, right? And, and even though through the midst of some of the most hardest things you're going through, you can still crack a smile, you can still laugh, you can still say thank you, Jesus, because he's giving you his joy. And that joy helps you move from day to day, right? But it's still not quite that simple. And I don't want to make this sound like dealing with anxiety is really just this easy process, right? I don't want to make it seem like if you're if you're wrestling with this, that you should have been over it a long time ago because it's real, right? And as I said before, if you're dealing with a clinical level of, of anxiety, go see somebody. See Dr. God and then also go see Dr. Whoever, uh, you are led to go see, right? But that's important. But understand that that, that God could have also, uh, could have fully supplied the Romans with so much joy and peace and, and topped off their spiritual tanks and left absolutely no room for anxiety. But understand that God knew that if he didn't change their mindsets, then joy and peace would eventually give way to anxiety. And so that's why God is really concerned about our mind because the Bible says in Proverbs, as a man thinketh, so is he. A lot of the things we face spiritually and physically deals with our thinking. And so there's sometimes God can't really move forward with us because honestly, we're not, we're not dealing with stuff. We're not changing our thinking. Um, and I think some of my members know this because I've said this before is that I'm not in to behavior modifications, Right. That when I preach, I'm not trying to modify your behavior. I'm trying to help shift your thinking because the way you think will then eventually affect your behavior. Simply telling people to stop doing this, stop doing this, stop doing this, stop doing this. Most people know they should stop, right? You know you should stop doing some things. Some of y'all are doing some stuff right now you need to stop doing, right? And you know it. But just because you know it doesn't, is not changing anything, is it? So, but when you start thinking differently about your life and you start thinking differently about what you're, what you're facing, what you're dealing with, then your behavior shifts with that, right? Simply telling somebody to quit doing something does not fix it. That's, that's, that's my thoughts. And like I said, my job isn't to make you think like me, it's just to make you think, right? But 
So God, in knowing that simply giving them joy and peace wasn't going to be enough. He had to affect their thinking. Because if the Romans didn't change their thinking, they'd be back wrapped up, tied up, tangled up in anxiety again. And so that's why we need to have practices that they deal with our thinking about our living, our lives, and our circumstances. We change our thinking about those things. Then we'll really start seeing significant changes and improvements in other areas of our lives. If you change the way you think about your spouse, your marriage will shift, right? Good or bad, right? If, if you start focusing on everything your spouse doesn't, giving you're anxious about all of that stuff, your marriage will go down with that, right? If you start counting your blessings and you start dealing healthy in a healthy way with your relationship issues, then your marriage will move in a different direction. And same as with anxiety, because we carry anxiety about relationships, we carry anxiety about our health, we carry anxiety about our money, Right. If we start thinking about money differently. Right. And we don't see it as the end all be all. We don't see it as our lifeline. We know it comes and it goes. And we start thinking responsibly about our finances. Then our financial situations shift over time. Right. We, we still may not have more, but but we're getting by with, with, with what we have. Right. I can say that for myself. When I started thinking differently about how I manage what everything God has given me, every I seem to have enough. I didn't have exactly what I wanted. Don't get me wrong. I didn't have what I wanted, but I had enough to meet the need. It's about thinking. So that's what God wanted to do. So in order uh, for this prayer that Paul prays in Romans 15 and 13, God didn't simply change their, their circumstance. He wanted to change their thinking habits. And because if he did that, then joy and peace would eventually um, rise up. And, and take and, and take and take root in, in their lives. And so he required one thing before unleashing this joy and this peace from heaven to them. The next part of that sentence says, as you trust in him. So may he give you hope, right? May the God of hope fill you with joy and peace as you trust in him. And so it comes back to that word trust. How much do you really trust God? Um, because it shows in your living. If you say you trust God and you for real, for real trust God, it'll show in your living. Um, and I want to say this. Trust is not a magic bullet. I, I, I Like I said in, in the, the, the prelude to this, I want to be real and relevant. Right? There is no magic bullet that can instantly remove all traces of, of anxiety. Right? But God is still trustworthy. And even if God doesn't take all the all the things that are making you anxious away, or if it seems like those like those triggers are still there, just know you don't you're not walking through it alone. He's walking with you, and you got to trust Him to walk with you. And what I found is that when I trust God to walk with me, I found that He I can trust God to carry me when I feel like I can't walk anymore. And so. Let God be the rock that you stand on and you cling to as you fight anxiety, as you fight these issues, these stresses and these pressures, right? Um, so that you so you can remove anxiety's grip on your life because you're not really living your best life if you are overwhelmed with anxiety. Um, and so this isn't just about praying it away. So I'm giving you some hopefully some tools that are helping you. Um, think about how to deal with these with these stresses of life. But also, like I said, if you're dealing with a clinical level of, of this, you need to see somebody. You need to talk to somebody about it. Um, so understand that God is worthy of our deepest trust. And when you trust him, he'll fill you with so much joy and peace that you'll literally overflow with hope. And then that hope will then spill on somebody else, right? Your, your hope can be the very thing that helps somebody put out somebody else's fire. Um, it can of, of anxiety that your hope can can be contagious, right? More contagious than Rona, uh, and to help somebody else along their way. To understand that your living isn't just for you to live and die and go to heaven. That you're living down here on this side. Every day you you wake up, understand that every day you live there. There's a, there's some purpose in that day God wants you to, to get into. That God wants you to tap into. There's some purpose that He really wants you to uh to really take hold of and you can't do that when you're when you're bombarded with anxiety that you're not dealing with in a healthy way um 
And, and I just want you to know that God has his hope for you, but I want to challenge you with this question. Can you find the courage to take your hands off of those things that you're grasping and trust God with, right? Can you take your hands off of the things that you've been trying to micromanage and control and fix and work out for yourself? Can you just take your hands off of it and trust God with it? Yes, Sister Kim, let go and let God. Yes, Deborah, trust and that never doubt. He will. I'm, I'm a witness that he'll bring you out, right? Um, but God, but you have to tap into God to get all that, right? It just doesn't come, right? Because it's floating around the air somewhere. You got to really tap into God. So that's why I want to challenge you with your prayer life. Start, stop being fake in your prayer life. Quit having fake conversations with God and give God the real, right? Be honest and transparent with God. Give him that stuff. Call his name and say, God, I just can't fix this. I need you to deal with this. I turn, turn your kids over to God. Turn your spouse over to God. Turn, turn, turn your coworkers over to God because you can't fix none of them people, right? If you got more month than you have money, turn it over to God and ask God to make you a good steward over whatever he gives you, right? And, and say that with a sincere heart. So cast your cares on him because he cares for you. Cast your cares on him and trust in him. That, that is Paul's prayer for the church in Rome is my prayer for you. I may the God of hope continue to fill you with joy and peace as you trust in him. And remember, sometimes the answer to your prayers are the people God has placed around you and the people that God has equipped with gifts, talents, and training. So as we deal with anxiety, the church has to take this stigma off of it. I can't tell you how many pastors I know and talk to that deal with anxiety of not meeting their members' expectations, that of the anxiety of not being a good enough a spouse or being a good enough parent. Uh, all of that is real, you guys. And so I want the church to start dealing some honest conversations, some real and relevant conversations. So I hope this was a start. I hope that dealing with anxiety um, isn't just simply a pray it away type of thing. But God has some practices he wants you to put in place, but he wants to start with your thinking. God really, really wants to address how you think about things um, so that he can then begin to heal you from the inside out, right? Sometimes to get rid of the stuff, he has to start pruning on the inside before you see any signs of change on the outside. And, that, and that's for real. And so I just want to challenge you to seek God in prayer and have honest prayer with God. Journal about your journey. Um, I found that when you journal about your journey, you can come back a year later, sometimes a month later, sometimes years later and see where God has brought you from. And that just fuels your faith for the next journey. It really does. And it also helps other people um, on their faith journey as well. Uh, so don't let the anxiety cripple you. Don't let it cause you to lose your faith and your hope in God. Don't let anxiety separates you from the healthy people God has placed around you who love you and care about you. Um, seek help when you need it. There's no shame in that. Um, and know that even, and don't let it build up either. Sometimes this stuff can be nipped early by having a regular prayer life with God and really seeking God for understanding wisdom and guidance and learning to trust and hope uh, in him and him alone. And then if you need to go to somebody else, seek God for prayer to who to go see some professionals that can help you deal with this stuff because it's real. And I can tell you so many people love you and don't want you to take yourself out of here earlier than you have to. Um, I know we all want to get to heaven, but I don't think we all in that big of a rush um, because there's still work for us to do. There's still lives to be changed. There's still the impact that we need to make as people of God. And God wants to use us till he uses us up. God wants to get the best out of, out of each and every one of us. And so I want to encourage you just to continue to like, share, and support the ministry. Um, to my Shepherd Street folk, I miss you guys. I love you all. Um, so tonight, if there's any prayer requests, I'm going to hang on a little while longer. Um, if you need prayer, just, just type you need prayer in there. Um, and um, continue to follow us on all social media platforms, Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube for content to help develop your spiritual life. Um, so make sure you're doing that. But I do want to encourage you that if you need prayer, just chime in, throw in, just say me, 
Um, you don't have to tell me exactly what it is, but I do want to pray with you. If you want to send in your, your prayer request, you can, you can email it to sscc.ok at gmail.com, or you can send it to Shepherd Street Christian Church um, through the Messenger app. Those are That's private. Everybody doesn't get to see that. That comes directly um, to me, the prayer request due. So if you need that, if you need prayer tonight, I want to pray with you before I get off of here. Um, so if you just need prayer, just throw up any prayer. I love you too, Duchess. Miss Dana, Miss Rita, Sister Ramona, praying for you all. I'm going to pray. If there's any others, if you need prayer, just let, let me know. I want to pray with you guys tonight. Um, because anxiety is some real stuff that we deal with. And I just want us as, as believers to, to stop hiding stuff behind the closet and start dealing with this. Yes. Yes, Sister Kim, we're going to be calling your mother. Continue to lift her, lifting her up in prayer. And please let uh, Miss Jan know that we're thinking about her too. We'll be praying. A hey, Gabrielle, yes, we'll be praying for you and Deborah. All right. If you if you still need prayer, just continue to do that while I pray. Um, I'm going to ask also that you pray for somebody else. If you've seen somebody else comment that they need prayer, lift up, pray, pray for them as well. All right. And I'm going to see all of these comments also later. So if I don't quite acknowledge you, I'll see it and I'll continue to pray, pray with you. So let us go to God in prayer. God, our father, we thank you for your love, for your mercy towards us. This new every morning, because God, it seems like every morning we have a reason to need new mercy. Uh, but we pray, Lord God, that you strengthen our hearts, that you strengthen our spirit, God. We pray that you saturate us with your love, your joy, and your peace, that it overflows. But change our hearts, oh God, and change our minds. Lord, that we might think and see things the way that you see it. Show us ourselves, Lord God. Let us be transparent with you. When we're not okay, when we are okay, let us just give it all to you because you want it all. And God, we lift up families who are dealing with, with physical illness, for all of our first responders, for our people, our essential personnel out there who are trying to do the best that they can. Um, I'm praying for all of those who are dealing with illness, Lord God, physical illness, that you bring healing, God. You bring comfort to those who are on the other side of it. Uh, you bring wisdom to those professionals who are ministering care, Lord God, and cover them with your hedge of protection as well. We pray for those that are dealing with mental illness, Lord God. We know that it's real, Lord God. Folk ain't crazy. Heavenly Father, but we're, we just lift them up in prayer, Lord God. We know that it's not any stigma to that, God. We don't want to claim that in the name of Jesus. But we pray, Heavenly Father, that you would bring resources to them and get them to the right people, Lord God, to help them deal with these things that are obviously dealing with them in painful ways. We pray for those who are dealing with financial issues and burdens, oh God. We pray, Heavenly Father, that you are a God of provision. You are a God of more than enough. And I pray, Lord God, for everybody who is concerned about bills and finances, Heavenly Father, that you make us good stewards over the little bit you've given us, Lord God, and you step in and be Jehovah Jireh, our provider, Lord God, um, that you make those ends meet, Heavenly Father. Lord, we pray for, for families who are under distress relationally, Lord God. Lord God, as, as we watched films over this weekend dealing with families, Lord God, families deal with so much. And I pray, Lord God, that families will begin a healing process of talking about what's going on, Lord God, not bottling it up. I pray that families, Heavenly Father, will, will can, that you will mend relationships between parent and child and husband and wife and brothers and sisters. Lord God, let us reach out with love and compassion and have a listening ear, Lord God, not waiting to respond, but an ear that's willing to listen and hear somebody's heart, Lord God, that families will be risen up out of the ashes, Lord God. I pray for every man who is trying to do the best that he can, who's trying to raise his kids, who's trying to just be a good man, Lord God, strengthen him and give him the courage to press on. I pray for every mother, Lord God, who is just trying to be all that you called her to be. And I pray, Lord God, uh, for, for the single women, Lord God. I pray for the married women, for the women with children and without children, Lord God. I pray that you remind them that you created them, Lord God, that they weren't made of things that are easily broken, Lord God, and that you strengthen them and give them the courage to hold their, their head up high and stick their chest out and square their shoulders and plant their feet and know that you've got their back, you've got them, Lord God, and they can face 
no matter what tomorrow brings. Lord, I pray for our children that you cover their heads, you cover their hearts and their minds, God. There's so many things competing for their attention, so many things that are trying to take root in their spirit, Lord God. I pray against all those things that are trying to snatch our youth and trying to, to get to get them to a place, Lord God, where they can't see the beauty you've placed inside of them and the power you've placed inside of them, Lord God. I pray right now that every child will find somebody and have somebody come into their life who will speak life into those dry bones, Lord God, that we will raise up a generation who who loves you and who's not ashamed of you and who is bold in their faith and courageous in their living and will make a difference in this world. And I pray for our world leaders, God, that they will remind them that you will remind them that you rest, that they rest on your shoulders, God, that the government shall rest upon your son's shoulders, God, and that they can't do anything, Lord God, without your permission. We pray, Lord God, that you turn those hardened hearts and, and those political divides, that you melt that, Lord God, that people will do what's right for your children. Let us as Christians be bold in our faith, compassionate in our hearts, real about what life is like and what life is dealing with. And let us not sit idly by as evil and oppression and manipulation goes forth, Lord God. Let us call those things out, Heavenly Father, and stand and and love mercy and do justice and walk humbly with you to take care of the widows and the orphans, to take care of the stranger and the visitor, Lord God, to care for the homeless and those in need. Let us not turn our backs on people, Lord God, who are dealing with real life, but let us seek you for guidance, power, and understanding. We love you, Jesus, and it's in your name we pray. Amen. God bless you, God keep you, and I pray that some mighty things begin to happen in your life and that, that you deal with anxiety before it deals with you and you help somebody else deal with the storm that's going on on the inside. God bless you and God keep you. Good night.